Okay, in this video we're going to look at five different examples of writing numbers as a percentage. We've got 1 fifth, 3 over 20, 7 over 16, 4.25, and 0 0.31. There's different strategies we can do. We've seen that if you put a number over 100, whatever, whatever number's on top, so if we have n over 100, whatever number's on top is the percentage. So the idea is, if we have a fraction, for example, if we could make the denominator into a 100, that would tell us the percentage. So I think part A and B will do that way. D and E are actually super easy, and then we'll come back to part C. So let's look at part A first. So if I multiply the denominator by 20, well, so also the numerator by 20, I would get 20 over 100, and that would tell us that one-fifth is the same thing as 20%. So again, when the denominator is 100, whatever's on top is going to be the percentage. Part B, we can do the same thing. We could multiply the denominator by 5, and so also the numerator by 5. So we have 100 in the denominator, 15 in the numerator, and that would be the same thing as 15%. D and E are, are nice. We've seen in other examples that to go from a percentage to a decimal, you move, you replace the percentage and move the decimal two places to the left. Well, for these, what we do is we just undo that. We now move the decimal place two places to the right, and we turn that into a percentage. So 4.25 would be the same thing as 425%. 0 0.31, if we move that two places to the right, make it a percentage, it says we would have 31%. Okay, so last but not least, let's look at part C here. I don't see a nice whole number that I could multiply 16 by in order to get 100 in the denominator. So, so my, my, the way of approaching A and B, I'm not going to do that on C. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this back into a decimal and then just move it two places like we did. So to make 7 over 16 into a decimal, I'm going to do long division. So we have 7. So we have 7, and we're going to divide that by 16. Okay, so 16 won't go into 7. It'll certainly go into 70. And let's see, I guess it would go in four times. 4 times 16 is going to be 64. We can subtract. That would give us 6. Drop down a 0. Okay, 16 will go into 63 times. So let's see, I'm going to put my decimal there and my 0 there. 3 times 16 is going to be 48. If we subtract, that'll give us 12. We can drop down our 0. Okay, how many times does 16 go into 120? Let's see. Uh, let's see. 6 times 16 is 96. So certainly one more. Let's see. 7 times 16, that'll be 112. So I think that'll do the trick. Uh, so let's multiply by 7. That'll give us 112. I don't think this is going to terminate anytime soon. So maybe we'll do one more and then estimate. So let's see, 16 will go into 80, how many times? I guess again about 4 times, 4 times 16, 64, oh hey, no, even better, my arithmetic is off, perfect. 5 times exactly, oh, okay, 5 times 16 is exactly going to be 80, I almost missed it. Okay, perfect. So 7 over 16, that's going to be the same thing as 0 0.4375. And now we can do the exact same thing. We can do the exact same thing. Let's move it twice. And that'll give us 43.75%. So again, different strategies. If you have things as a, as a, as a decimal, it's easy. You just move it two places to the right. If you, can, if you have a fraction and you can easily make the denominator into a 100, that's also a nice approach. Again, part C, I think, was probably the worst, just because we have to do sort of a, the long division. And that's really the, the most, to me, the most tedious part of the problem.